What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well, in today's video, we are going to go ahead and take a look for the very first time at the ASRock H510 Pro BTC mining motherboard. We're also going to discuss my future plans for an upcoming build with this motherboard. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay guys, so let's talk about this new motherboard. So a Rigelous motherboard is entirely outside of my realm of expertise and also comfort level. So I'm excited to get into this project, but also a little nervous, you know, something new, something different. Before we get started, huge shout out to the team over at AAAWave.com. They actually sent me this and I'm super excited. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So this is, as I said before, the ASRock H Wow, the ASRock H510 Pro BTC Plus. What a mouthful. So let's take a look at this board. So it's a riserless board, meaning that you don't use GPU risers. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six total reinforced PCI slots that do have the butterfly clip built in with those slots. So the nice thing is you'll take your GPU and you'll go ahead and put it in the slot and you'll go ahead and get everything you need through the PCI port. Granted, if you think of a traditional riser that you'd put right here, you have to power it. Well, here's one of my biggest questionable parts here as I start to dive into this project. We have a Molex port. So we have one, two, three, four total Molex ports that are used to power our slots, our GPU riser slots, or these individual PCI slots through here. So you have to end up having one, two, three, four total Molex uh, connections here. That's not typical for your typical power supply. And even on, your, on some power supplies that do have a strand that has four total, you kinda and probably don't wanna run four Molex off of one total strand. It just, just something about, would you run four risers off of one total strand? You know, it just kind of makes you go, eh, no, I mean, you could, but eh, probably not right here. So outside of that, let's take a look at the rest of the board. So uh, we have our CPU slot here. Uh, we will be using a LGA 1200 uh, socket um, processor in that port as well. We have some heat sinks throughout. We have an eight pin over here for our motherboard power. And we have one slot, which we'll be using eight gigabytes here, and we'll get into this, some of our supporting uh, hardware that we're gonna be using for the build. So your traditional power supply is gonna plug in right here. But take a look. This connection is for starting up the second power supply. So you know how traditionally you'd have like uh, a, a, um, a daisy chain cable if you have two power supplies? and you plug into that and then one goes into here and one goes into the other power supply. Well, it has it built right into the board, which is super, super convenient. And then down here, they have the same thing. So you could either use this one here or you can use this one here. So that's kind of nice. You know, they're kind of, they built this board with miners in mind to a degree. So the feature with the power supply is huge win. Smart, I like it. Reinforced PCI slot, smart, I like it. Molex, what are you thinking? Why couldn't you just do six pin here? Come on, you're killing me. Why couldn't you have one, two, three, four total, six pin, and we would have been on our day, you know, on our way, good to go. So some other things they have here, which was really interesting. So this is just theorizing. We have six slots, right? Take a look at this slot. This port is for mining only. So it's USB. 
So this is like where you plug your USB adapter card in. You know how you do that, like traditionally, USB adapter card with your USB cable. Does this give us a seventh slot for uh, mining? I don't know, we'll find out as we get into it. So that's our board. Now, these traditionally go in a server case. I don't have one sitting around. Hey, if you got one out there, your company, your sponsor, your partner, you wanna reach out to me and provide one, awesome. But I don't have any server cases to put this in. So we need to get creative. But first off, we'll talk about at the end. I'm excited to talk to you guys about that. But first, let's go ahead and jump into what hardware we'll be using to support this motherboard. So here's the hardware that we're thinking about using for this upcoming build. I haven't started it yet, so if you have any recommendations, feel free to reach out and we'll pivot and change things up. So we're going to use this Alexar NS100 solid state drive uh, provided from AAAWave.com. Our memory is, we are, now I got a great deal on these. We are going to use, this is a DDR4-3200 and this is a uh, total here, eight gigs. So I got a great deal. Newegg was having one of those sales where you got two of these sticks. So I was like, sure, we'll throw eight gigs into this, but eight gigs are not needed to mine, especially with Hive OS. You can get away with four, no problem. But hey, we got it, we're gonna use it. So I got a few packs of these uh, for future builds. Here is what we're gonna go ahead and put in. And uh, shout outs to Red Fox Crypto for recommending this on his uh, riseless motherboard that he has. It's an Intel Celeron. G5905. So this actually uses the LGA 1200 socket. And that'll go right in here. And finally, these guys, they're so cheap. These were like $12 off Newegg. These are just thermal take, little simple heat sinks, nothing crazy with a fan on top here. And uh, yeah, it's like 12 bucks and it does the trick. You don't need to go crazy. I'm not CPU mining, so it'll work out nicely. So that's our plan. So we got our CPU, we got our memory, we have our hard drive. So now we have to talk about power supplies. So let me go ahead and grab my power supplies and my game plan for a frame. So I originally wanted to use this guy, the EVGA Supernova 1000G+. Now, I'll tell you about the GPUs at the end. I have them off to the side. We'll show you guys those. I'm excited to share those with you guys. But my challenge was, was mole exports was having enough strands to cover our mole exports. And it's just a little overkill because the cards I'm gonna be using are significantly efficient. So I was like, eh, we're gonna hold on to that, especially for the cost of this guy. So my next thought was, well, what can I do to get by? So I do need to buy another one of these, but I'm gonna go ahead and use two of these new Superfly super fly, wow, super flower, um, 650 watt power supplies. We used this on my last rig that we did build. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link down below to it. Uh, and we were running six NVIDIA cards on that and it worked great. So my thought pattern is, can I nab two 650 watt, now overkill, but I'll use these in the future as I need to, uh, two of these guys. They're fully modular, they're a good price and I've had good results with them. So I'll run two of them, one on each side of the board, and then we'll go ahead and utilize them with the 24-pin um, slot, as well as with our nice little secondary power supply, and then we can feed uh, one strand, we'll do two of the Molex, and another strand, we'll do the other two Molex, and that just puts us in better standings. So let's discuss our GPUs next, and then we're gonna talk about what fun we're gonna have with a frame. Now that right there, that is a picture-perfect moment. Check that out. So we will be building our first RX 6600 rig, and we will be using two of the Power Color Hellhound RX 6600s, love these cards, as well as a Sapphire Pulse RX 6600. And then some of our newer cards, we have a Gigabyte Radeon RX 6600, and we got some twins here. We have the XFX Swift 210, RX 6600. So these are gonna be great. I'm really looking forward to these. These cards should do just sub of 30 uh, mega hash. And then our watts are really gonna vary based off the card, but I'll put them anywhere between 50 to 60 watts total, which is gonna be great. So all six of these will sit right in here. They're not gonna use a ton of watts. I mean, we ideally could get by entirely with one power supply, but we're gonna play it safe with two 
for especially for the cost of the power supplies and we have to make sure that we power our Molex ports. So now let's talk about our frame project. Oh boy. So here's our frame guys. It ain't pretty, but we hope to make it into something. So I decided I want this to be in an open air frame. So instead of buying a frame and then just trying to customize it to be lower down, because you gotta remember, we're gonna put the cards in here. The top of the frame is gonna be really low. It's not gonna be traditional to your typical open air frame. So I'm going to build my own open air frame. Now this is not up my avenue of skill set. I am not Seb Heslow. Man, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. He has an entire PDF guide to, he has literally written instructions with details on how to build a mining, open mining rig frame for a 12 GPU frame for all of his stuff. So like, this is not my world, but I'm taking, putting on my Seb Heslow hat and we're gonna go ahead and build our own frame. So. It's gonna take me some time for this build. Uh, it won't be out this week, hopefully next week. The frame literally is gonna take the most work. Just kind of customizing this, figuring it out. But I am excited, guys, to get into building our first ASRock H510 Pro BTC motherboard with our RX 6600s with our custom frame. Well, if you guys are looking forward to this video and excited about it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.